Hey guys, welcome back to the WK Space Agency. I'm Wandering Kid. Now, I've been blowing up a lot of probes. I'm trying to design an SSTO probe that can act as a satellite for me when it goes up. This, well, didn't work so well. Neither did these six. But I finally figured out what the problem was, and I'll show you those adventures here shortly. The short version of a very long story is that your craft typically has to be balanced around center of mass before and after fuel usage. Once you've used up a good chunk of your fuel, center of mass shifts. I'll show you how that works here in a second. But what happens is, is your engine, when you're trying to build an SSTO, is 1.2 tons. The Octo is only 0.1 in comparison to the Mark 1 cockpit, which is 1.28. So what was throwing me off was I had a horrible balance issue going on continuously whenever I built these things. So, let's show you how to build one correctly. Advanced inline stabilizer is your friend. going to occur on this. All right, now. We need to get fuel onto the ship. One liquid fuselage. Now, usually you want to put your engine on after, but bear with me, because what I want to do is, is I want to be able to balance weight off. The so engine engine. Now, we're going to need space fuel. Now, let's take a look at center of mass. We're not going to care about center of lift yet. We're just going to take a look at center of mass. Let's see what happens when everybody's empty. When this empties out, here's the fuel point. So we're going to offset these and make them roughly even. Now, that doesn't look too pretty, does it? Heck, if anything, that looks like a mess. How do we deal with this? Right, there we go. What we do is we take one FLR25 RCS fuel tank. Cost 800, we're not even gonna touch it. We're gonna slap that across the front and look at that. Our center of mass shifted forward. Now we're not quite such a mess. We bring this forward. Now it doesn't matter whether these are full or empty. Nothing moves. When we bring liquid fuel in, we have very little movement. So we're just going to shift this forward a small... There we go. And now when we fill these tanks, doesn't matter. We empty this tank, we're not moving very much. Good, now we can have a decent and stable center of lift. So, next thing we need to do, put some wings on this thing. Now... One of the things I did to show you this is something I don't actually want to do. We're going to take those fuel tanks off for a second. Yeah, roughly about there will work for now. What we're going to do is we're going to shove these right in the middle. And kind of eyeball our center of mass. We'll move this stuff around here in a minute. And we're going to smack, slap on a pair of Rocket Max 48S's over there. And we need something to get air in. Now, take off the engine, throw it away, go we'll get a new one. This is so the part order picks up air and puts it to the engine first. This is more important when you have multiple engines, but it can't hurt for now. Now, we'll put these engines through a small test here shortly to make sure everybody's working and nobody's blocked by wings and things like that. But I want to get my center of mass and aerodynamics cleaned up first. So, we're going to shift these. Uh, hold down shift to get smaller adjustments. There we go. Now, center of mass, center of lift. Where to go? There we go. All right, now. I'm going to use delta wings. Notice I have 6.1 tons of craft. I want at least six units of lift. I'm going to adjust the position of these delta wings 
to just push my uh, center of lift just behind the center of mass there. Need some elevants. Move these out on the wings a bit. Reason for that is because I want a pair in here. These are going to be pitch and roll. These, oops, let's hit that one. These are going to be pitch only. Now, need a couple of other generic parts on here. Let's start with some landing gear. And we'll shift this stuff around here shortly. We are at 24 of 30 parts. Let's look that up. A couple more things we're going to need. First off, this thing definitely needs power. It's a drone. Yeah, that hides that away very nicely. Next thing, since we're going to use it for a satellite, it's going to need a comm. Might as well... Oops. Hit the right buttons. Might as well slap a thermometer on this thing, too, while we're at it. Because there's a lot of satellites that seem to want thermometers. 29 of 30 parts. What else could we need? Tail fin. And that, we're going to make you all only. We have a plane. Now we just need to put it through a couple of quick tests to make sure nothing is horribly off. I want to make sure my center of mass is still working balanced. When we drain that out, we're good. Drain that out, we're good. All right. Total tonnage of the plane, 6.5 tons. All right, first things first, I want to do a, a quick uh, Rocco Max test, make sure the wings aren't blocking these engines on me. I also want to double check that my center of mass is in front of my rear landing gear. All right, we're going to move this stuff around a hair. So when you touch it, it moves down just a hair. I'm going to push that up one notch, and we're going to do the same for these. I'll push them up just a little more. There, that should be even. And bring these... Uh, actually, yeah, that should be fine. All right, let's go through our tests. All right, we're good there. I'm going to bring the throttle way down. All right, our engines aren't blocked. We'll hit the brakes and recover this. Now, there's something else I wanted to show you, and it's part of the reason why I put these tanks way out on the wings. Besides the fact that a wider landing gear is better for stability, it's so I can do this. Right now, because this thing's attached, I have absolutely no idea what my Delta V is. I take this off, and the only thing that has Delta V are these 48S Rocco Maxes. I'll have 1600 Delta V minus what I need for circularization when I get to orbit. So let's go put this through its paces, and what I'll do is, is I'll show you a couple of my wrecks along the way. Well, uh, maybe not. I may have to abort this landing attempt. Oh, all right. Oh, I should be able to level this off. Come on, come on. Ooh. Oh boy. No Kerbals were hurt in this flight. So, my guess is my drag is causing all sorts of stupid here. can get this thing stable again. Come on. Yeah, we're, we're gonna... We're going down. We're going down.
Ah, I just got myself into a flat spin again. Some boost to get out of that. Come on. No, don't hit the mountain. Don't hit the mountain. Come on. Come on. take any landing at this point. So hopefully you all enjoyed that little failure montage of my previous drone builds. At this point we're just aiming for a grid. From about 35k, 37k, all the way up to 60k, you're just trying to eke your engines out. And this takes about 5 to 6 minutes in real time. I figured I'd speed you along here. This is one of those times where I understand why people would use MechJeb. It's not difficult, it just takes a while. So, at some point, our engines will cut out roughly between 55 and 60k. And at that point, we'll start playing again. Like so. So, now what we're going to do, we're going to shut down the engine, and we're going to close our intakes just to reduce drag while we're finishing getting out of the atmosphere. Double check that you got them both closed. Now, if you have action groups, this is obviously much easier. We'll stage our main engines into play. And now we're going to wait for apoapsis. And with merely 55.8 meters per second worth of delta V, we should be able to circularize. Now here's one of the two reasons you brought along that big old reaction wheel. So you can move around in space. The Octo just doesn't have enough to move around five or six tons worth of ship. Okay, so it's a four second burn for us. Now, what I had to do there was I had to reset the thrust estimates because it was still working off of the turbojet instead of off of my 48S's. That's overshot a hair, but that's okay.
There we go. We're in orbit. Not too bit shabby. Now, for those of you who are curious about fuel usage, we used up about half a tank of our jet fuel. And we've barely touched... Oh, let's say... Uh, five units of a hundred. About three percent of three to four percent of our fuel for our space work. So if we remember right, we came up with sixteen roughly sixteen hundred delta V. I've got about fifteen fifty left to go play in satellite orbits. Now the next thing we'll do is land it. I find that aiming my periapsis about ten grand here, or about twenty to twenty five grand over KSC tends to work out reasonably well for me. So our deorbit burn is going to cost me 77.8 meters per second. So we have roughly 1400 to play with while we're in orbit or in space. Atmosphere and sunlight. Hey, we can see what's going on again. Let's get our plane flipped over. Okay, now we're going to shut down our Rocco Maxes. We're going to open up our intakes again. There are two times you may want to do this, and it depends on their position compared to center of mass and center of lift. One is way up here if you have to go slow. And that's primarily because you don't want to have one open and one closed when you're at very low atmosphere. The other option is if for some reason you've got your intakes way ahead of the ship. Let's see if I can get some light on it. Like, let's say way up here. You may not want to open them until you're down in the atmosphere, you fully braked, and you're under jet power, and you're trying to get back under jet power again. And the reason for that is because you don't want this high atmosphere entry to flip your bird over from the drag on the open intakes. In general, it's better to leave your intakes around or behind your center of mass and center of lift just so they're not throwing off your balance too badly. So now we're going to come in for a glide path. And my engines are ready if I need them. Take a look at our map. We still have a periapsis way out there. My guess is we'll have to come under power somewhere around here just to keep lift over the mountains so it doesn't take too long. We just started to get uh, burn sounds and we're starting to see re-entry heat showing up. What we're trying to do is kill our downward velocity while we kill horizontal speed as well. Now, the plane does want to fight you a bit while you do this. And if you play with deadly re-entry, you're very familiar with having to do this process. Otherwise, bits and pieces of your plane tend to burn off. And this plane does not have enough lift to carry it without power. And I don't want to come below 20k, so I'm going to engage my engines. Now, it's way overpowered for its mass, so... I'm just going to keep bleeding off speed while we try and stop bleeding off, stop bleeding off height and just keep bleeding off some of this speed. There we go. Now we get over the mountains and do our final approach. If you start seeing atmospheric entry effects while you're landing, you've cranked up your engines too high for the amount of mass you burned while you were in space. In theory, I should trim this plane so that I don't have to fight it as much and I can hit my altitude, but I've never really gotten trim to work properly for me. Trying to stay high so I can keep some speed so this landing doesn't take forever. 
Near the end of the grasslands, I'll drop down a little further, and we're going final approach at about 1,500 meters, between 1,000 and 15. As I near the edge of the grasslands, I want to dive so that I can line up my final approach. As I pass the edge of the grasslands, I want to get down to three, maybe 400 meters. If you don't look like you can reline up, this is when you abort, right here, and you go around for another pass. Killing my engine. I'm gonna glide the rest of the way in. I'm gonna move the camera so I can see under the wheels. She's a bit nose heavy on me. I'm not lined up. Minor yaw adjustments, don't go nuts. Okay, I need a little bit of uh, engine power here. There's my lights. Come on, pull up, pull up, pull up. Ready to land just yet. Okay, not my best landing, but it will work. Some more of that. And we're down. I've done better landings, but I'll take it. So, we know this plane works. We recovered 17,370 funds from the satellite. It cost us 174 to put up. So, minus some fuel, I expect whenever this thing comes down, we'll recover at least 16,000 from it. So, we have pretty much a straight-up reusable satellite built now. Excellent. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.